Next, I want to talk a little bit about that dysbiosis again. So I said that the antibiotics can lead to a dysbiosis, and one of the forms of dysbiosis is, again, it's candida, right, as I mentioned. But it can also lead to an elevation in these strains of bacteria. And these generally, it's not that these bacteria are necessarily bad or evil, but when they are growing and proliferating out of control, they can create some problems. As an example, some of the offshoots of these kind of bacteria are compounds called lipopolysaccharides. These are toxic compounds that can cause inflammation. Uh, an additional, we know that like bacteroides um, and some other species of bacteria, that when we get the imbalance with heavy chronic antibiotic use leads to weight gain, especially in children. Children that have been on multiple antibiotics, we know they have a greater risk of developing obesity in their adult life as a result of the abnormal bacterial quantities, meaning we're, 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 lead it, we're creating an imbalance of the different species that would otherwise help us to utilize energy effectively. And so now we're storing weight in the form of obesity instead of using that. We also see with the dysbiosis, we can have some of the better species. I say better, but it's not, again, it's, maybe I shouldn't, that's the wrong word, word choice. Some critical species, Bifidobacter and Lactobacilli, are very important species of bacteria. And of course, antibiotics can knock them out. What do these bacteria do? We oftentimes refer to these guys as good bacteria, but what do they do? Number one is they help you digest your food. So a lot of people after an antibiotic have digestive problems, really struggle with indigestion and other digestive problems. These bacteria, again, help you break your food down. That's one of their functions. What else do these healthy bacteria help us to do? They make neurochemicals, serotonin, dopamine. Okay, these chemicals are super important, not only for the function of the gut and motility of the GI tract, but they're important for mood, the brain. There's now research showing that antibiotic use causes, uh, in some people, causes leads to mania and depression, bipolar. And so you don't want, um, you know, if, you, if you've ever taken an antibiotic and you felt really super anxious or felt really, really bad after taking that antibiotic, this is, you know, this is, a potential possibility, right, is the good bacteria help you properly produce, you know, serotonin is a calming neurotransmitter, dopamine is a calming neurotransmitter, it makes you feel happy, it gives you kind of happy feelings, if you will. So these two very, very critical functions of bifidobacter and lactobacillus, there's a third function, and that is they help produce vitamins. Okay. Um, there's a lot of talk these days about vitamin K. Okay, vitamin K, very important for blood coagulation, very important for pulling calcium from your blood into your bone, very important vitamin for cancer. And we know that about half of your daily need for vitamin K, somewhere between 50 and 60%, we'll just say 50% here, of your vitamin K is produced by your microbiome, by your good flora, by your healthy bacterial flora. So this is one example of how knocking out good bacteria can lead to contribute to vitamin deficiency. We also know, for example, biotin is another one. Vitamin B7, biotin is oftentimes referred to as the skin, hair, and nail vitamin, but about 40 to 60% of your need of biotin directly daily comes from your, your microbiome. So if you don't have uh, a well-represented microbiome, you run a greater risk of developing a biotin deficiency as well. And some of the side effects of antibiotics, one of the side effects of, of long-term antibiotic use is eczema, eczema, skin rashes, etc. We also know that vitamin uh, B7 or biotin deficiency can cause that very same type of symptom. So you can see there's even some overlap in what the antibiotic causes long-term nutritionally with, with symptoms associated with antibiotic toxicity, etc. We also know there's another uh, there's a cause, there's a number four over here, and that is uh, something called immune crosstalk. What does this mean, immune crosstalk? Your gut is the largest conglomeration 
of immune cells or immune tissue in your body. Um, there's an there's a immune um, system in your gut called the GALT, the gastro-associated lymphoid tissue. This GALT represents some, some people, this number varies, but depending on the research, but 70 to 80 percent of your immune system is comprised of this GALT. This GALT is like a massive set of tonsils that wraps around your small intestine. And your good bacteria talk to the GALT, and the GALT talks back to the good bacteria. So if your good bacteria are recognizing something in your gut neighborhood that doesn't belong, some type of pathogenic creature, some type of food allergen, etc., it will send a message to the GALT so that your immune system can prepare for that foreign debris that's coming through your digestive tract and be ready for it. So this immune crosstalk is very, very critical. So we know these are just, generally, these are just some of the functions, right, of good quality, good healthy microbiome bacteria. There's a fifth uh, that we can add to that, and that's mucin production. Mucin is the, basically it's the snot, right? It's the mucus that lines your GI tract. And it's very important because this mucin is a physical barrier and it helps stop the gut from leaking. So those of you who've heard of leaky gut, this is one of the reasons why antibiotics can contribute to intestinal permeability or leaky gut. It has to do with you know, that mucin production. It also has to do with that immune crosstalk. So we get, again, we get lowered mucin production, which can lead to a kind of situation where you don't produce enough of the physical barrier that keeps the contents of your GI tract from leaking across into your, into your bloodstream. Now, so, so these five things are real common functions of your healthy bacteria, like really important functions. And so again, this is why, it's, this is why taking an antibiotic just in case is not a benign thing to do. It's not just, hey, take it and it won't hurt you. It's take it and there's the potential for these functions, these very critical functions to be diminished or to be hindered. So you wanna be real cautious, right? This is why, what do you ask? What's the name of the test? that you ask your doctor to run to differentiate bacterial versus viral versus fungal. Any takers on that? First one that types in the right answer, keep track of that mail. First one that types in the right answer, we're gonna send a free copy of No Gray, No Pain. So if you were paying attention earlier, you get that answer right first, we'll get you a free copy of No Gray, No Pain. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.